by the way, shout out to all the uh, YouTube reactors. Yes. It's positive. Everything they do is like super positive. And it's not like, you don't see YouTube reactors being like, this shit's fucking terrible. You don't see that. It's all, if they don't have anything nice to say, they don't say it. And it's just, there's a, it's a whole like portal of like positivity. You know? Yeah, I never thought about it that way. Yeah, it like combats all the negativity. You know what I mean? That's probably why I like it so much. When you watch somebody naturally reacting to a song and they're, you see their body kind of moving and they're like, it like makes you enjoy it more. My friend Greg turned me on to No Life Shack. Mm -hmm, he's and great. It, and it was just, it literally, he sent it to me because he was just like, this kid is so fun. And he's and he was doing metal videos at the time and he sent me a couple of metal videos that he had done and then I, I subscribed to his channel, started watching yeah. it. And so then when you hit his channel, you know, it's just like oh, let's go, yeah. Worlds colliding, you know. No life shack. What's no up? Life no life shack. shack. Uh, shout out to Lit Mafia, all the other YouTube reactors, man. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, you you know, you put it in that's great context for it, man, because I hadn't thought about it. That way, I didn't quite realize why I go down those rabbit holes, and that's exactly because it's positive. It. Yeah. It's positive. It's not like nobody wants to watch like a bunch of uh, people being like, "This is fucking garbage," you know. Like it, it gets to a point to where, you know, like we gotta, you gotta stop, man. You gotta, we, we need some positivity, you know. Yeah, so. and you learn about it. Sort of, it, it reminds me as a journalist of more sort of classical criticism, where you start to learn more about the person who's reporting on all this different stuff and you kind of get to know their personality and yeah. their likes and dislikes. Yeah. And then you can gauge how they're reacting to something versus how you might feel about it. And yeah. Yeah. That's like how it should be. Yeah. That's yeah. Nobody, the nobody conversation wants to, should be. Uh, anybody that enjoys watching somebody get bashed is not like somebody I want to hang out with. You know what I mean? It's not, there's already the news. There's already like a million angry people at Pepsi for an upside down cross or something. I don't know, like the flavor of the week kind of thing. You know, like we need positivity, you know, in that sense, especially yeah. in music, you know, I feel like everybody's competing and um, there's not many friends anymore in music. It's, it feels like uh, everybody's just out for themselves and it, it seems that way. The cinematic thing. I mean, you've always painted vivid pictures in your songs. Like I think of you as a storyteller relating these incidents from your life or these snapshots or the way that you're feeling in a certain time or whatever. And I think that's what people relate to a lot. And, you know, image has been part of it and you've always been interested in fashion and stuff like that. But I'm really digging these last few years how you've really put an emphasis on the cinematic side mm -hmm. and this like series of videos that go from cyberpunk to goth to, you know, all these different areas visually. I just, it's unacceptable to not give 110% and put money into something instead of like, I would, I would rather put money into a music video than into a car. I'll tell you that right now. I would give my, I would trade my car for uh, an amazing music video. I think that that's the most important thing because that lasts the longest, you know, so it's got to be, it's got to be like that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Without jumping 10 steps ahead through the process of, of conceptualizing these videos and, and coming up with these storylines and everything, is this giving you the itch to want to do more long form visual storytelling? Uh, I think people have ADD right now. So uh, uh, the sh I feel like the shorter, the, the, the shorter you can go, the better, just for people to... to uh, so not so much a movie or a TV series yet, but uh, maybe music videos. Maybe. Uh, oh, you mean like an actual movie? Yeah. Mm, maybe it almost seems like you could string together some of what you already have and yeah there's a story there yeah i don't want i don't want to say too much and then some other band steals my idea <laughs> like they always do so yeah maybe i shouldn't say it like that but it's happened there's there's definitely been you're one of those artists where you get you get to see those fun moments of a negative reaction that turns into a positive yeah that turns into imitation and then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, but that person was criticizing what Ronnie was doing two years yeah. ago. And, and I've done it. I've, dude, I get so inspired and then it turns into me uh, just, uh, I've been, I imitated, you know, like I loved Guns N' Roses' 80s hair metal and I ended up with a Joan Jett haircut. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not the first to do it and they weren't the first. The New York Dolls were the first or one of the first. Sure. Well, you can always go back and back. Even and back, back yeah. and back and back. So, uh, for me to even like, uh, 
get upset that somebody's uh, imitating me. It's just me getting su- I should be upset at myself because I've done it too. So, someone said once, um, Coldplay is 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 Radiohead meets you too, or you know, it's like you can break down these mathematical equations, but there's something about the way things are combined that they haven't been combined in that way before. Yeah. And then who you are as a person, as an artist. Personality comes out. Comes yeah. out. So. so and I'm I'm uh, aware that my voice is distinct and I'm very grateful for that. So with this revamp, I mean it's gotta be it's gotta be fun as an artist, I always think, to get a second bite at the apple, you know, when directors go back and do like the director's cut of their film and yeah. and uh, you're able to kind of revisit what you were trying to say and yeah. Spin it in a new way or, or maybe complete a thought that wasn't quite finished the way you wanted. What's the appeal for you, um, taking these old songs and stripping them down and rebuilding? Just to show how much better I got. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> fucking insane, you know what I mean? It's I straight up, I'm not even talking shit. It obviously, uh, if you haven't heard it, when you hear it, you'll understand. If you go back and listen to the old one, you hear the new one, you'll be like, yeah, he's gotten a little better, you know? It just overall the composition of it it's it's like phantom of the opera and it's uh it's bigger it's yeah. broader it's yeah. more yeah thematic and sort of yeah it's just looking back uh to the how much uh control i had on my vocals then to now is and it's just very uh pleasing for me like because yeah. i work so hard at it you know so yeah and i know that's always been important to you and i think that's been a distinguishing thing yeah it's super important uh to be uh, good live and it's re- you know what the best thing ever is I'm look right at the camera is when uh, losing my life is a good example uh, it, we have a live version uh, and the comments when they're like this is fake and I'm like thank you so <laughs> much yes. man because this shit's real man that is my voice that is me dude that is crazy and I see a lot of them they're like there's no fucking way this, you know, and it's just, you know, it just makes me so happy. That means I'm, I'm doing my job, you know what I mean? So. so walking into your house today, one of the first things I saw was the, and I think you might have posted this. Gotham City outside? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, once I got inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, Wayne Manor from the outside <laughs> was pretty great. Um, but the uh, Freddie Mercury that you have up. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I was struck by with this revamp is like the sort of rock opera, like... Mm-hmm big vocal and, and the, the dynamics. And that's one thing that I personally, as a fan, appreciate about your voice. Yeah, that picture my dad gave to me because uh, um, all the comments on the drug of me is reimagined are that I'm Freddie Mercury. So, and it made him like very happy. So he sent that to me for my birthday. I took a picture of it, posted on Instagram and so many people were mad because my dad uh, appreciated that people uh, said that I reminded him of Freddie Mercury. How? <laughs> I was like, you guys were mad at my dad. It was cool though. It's cool to, to even be compared on any platform to Freddie Mercury's literally iconic, man. That's the ambition that you have is to do things that are uh, to that scale. Because yeah. when I think about Queen, I think and it's not to say you're trying to be Freddie Mercury or anything. Yeah, I'm just no saying way. like, but, but that ambition and that idea of like, We'll do a rock opera. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll do a song I, with David Bowie. Well, you know. yeah, it's natural. It's a natural thing for me. It's like, uh, well, you're supposed to you're supposed to do another follow up to Popular Monster, man. Why didn't you do that? It's like because it's not natural to me. It's not natural. Okay, I'll do another rap song with with metal breakdown in it. Okay, maybe next time. Right now, I want to do this Phantom of the Opera, and uh, showcase my what my vocals can do. <laughs> Christopher Nolan, his movies, they make me feel a certain way. That's probably why he's so successful, because I'm not the only one. You know, just uh, the way that the, the chords move when uh, a certain scene is, is cinematography is happening, and it makes me feel a certain way. That's what, I, that's what I go off of. And I'm so glad that I never learned music theory, because I feel like you lose that creative element in a sense. You might be, like, amazing at, like, knowing the laws of music but for me too much music theory dampens your creativity and because uh, i go off of all feeling i learned the piano off of feeling guitar off of feeling any type of drums anything 
writing music was uh, just feeling how I felt, you know, so um, I don't ever want that to ever go away because if I feel this way, then at least one or two other people when they hear are going to feel like that.